Hey, welcome back. Sorry, I had some uh, connectivity issues, but hopefully we can get back into this game. Uh, thankfully, it is Doomsday, so I don't have to worry about time. <laughs> I just have to worry about not being removed from the game. Nice. Okay, that's their first spell for the turn and only spell, so we get to untap and play this knight, which is going to be nice. Thali is actually really good. I think Thali is a little bit better than knight here. Just to add a little bit more disruption and also pressure. I'm going to force it, wow. Didn't think of force. I guess the one nice thing about Thalia being forced instead of something like Deafening Silence is that we do have four copies in the deck and it's a legendary creature, so if we do lose it, it does just turn on the other ones that we could draw into. But I feel like this might just be a Doomsday. Yeah. I don't think we can race it. Even something like Questing Beast doesn't do it. Unless we can... We know about Street Wraith and Edge of Autumn. And I guess it's pretty close because like a non-creature spell for turn and then they have two draw effects through uh, Edge of Autumn and Street Wraith. And then they have Thassa's Oracle, which is four spells. So one more could be like an extra Street Wraith or something. Sadly, not looking too good. <laughs> I'm not familiar enough with the deck either to kind of look at this and see what they've taken, but... Uh, obviously, we can't see Thatsa's Oracle. Uh, I can't see a Street Wraith. I can't see an Edge of Autumn. Uh, how many LEDs can we see? One. Just one. I guess Brainstorm probably does it as well. So Brainstorm, Edge of Autumn, Street Wraith, something like LED, and then Thassa's Oracle. Unfortunately, even if we did have the blue version of like Meddling Mage, um, the Thought Season Force would have got there. So definitely very hard to beat without having something like maybe Force ourselves in response to the Thassa's Oracle, but then there's the Thought Season as well, so always tough. Yeah, there it is. So hopefully we can finish this 4 1. That would be pretty nice. And hopefully not have connectivity issues, but I think we'll be okay. 
Yeah, GG's, Jack. Obviously, uh, a pretty hard deck to deal with. I was just saying that even if we had the uh, the blue version with, like, Meddling Mage, the Thor Season Force is still just too much to, to get through anything. Not much we can do. But a very sweet deck. I think more players should be playing it. It's obviously one of the most powerful ones. Yeah, I don't think... Um, I think the pressure's just too slow for Maverick against Doomsday 80% of the time. I think my only out there was something like uh, Questing Beast off the top and the Gilded Goose being like another Exalted creature instead. Hey, Anzi. Hope you're well. Thanks for the uh, raid. Uh, we're currently 3-1, going into this last match, uh, like, up against... Not too sure, just went down to Doomsday, but, uh, some pretty sweet uh, games so far. We beat, uh, Death and Taxes, uh, Blue-Green Cloudpost, and mono White Bomberman. Ah, up against Nathan, classic. Uh, this is an interesting hand. Hey Pepper, thanks for the follow. Uh, let me know where you're from. If you play Legacy, what do you play in Legacy? Uh, this is a pretty interesting hand. It doesn't have a turn one accelerant, but I'm pretty happy to keep it because Sylvan Library is really nice. Um, and also just uh, Kaya can be pretty strong against certain matchups. I kind of want to keep the Windswept Heath for a, a, for the library. I, uh, I don't want to get Wasteland at turn one, so. I think it's a case of just Forest Pass. Which does give away some information because it's not a snow-covered forest. But I think we'll be okay. Opponent on six. Island themselves, interesting. Uh, no reason, really just a, um, uh, aesthetics reason. I should, but I should be running snow cupboards just for the, the sake of it. There are, um, obviously some upsides as well. I know one is that, um, if my opponent has an Oko and trades their Ice Bank Quadle for one of my creatures, if all of my, um, if all my basics are snow, I do have the ability to give the Ice Bank Death Touch, which is something to consider. But I do like the unhinged lands, so <laughs> that's uh, that's a reason why I don't. Hey Andre, thanks for the follow. Uh, let me know where you're from. If you play Legacy, what do you play Leg Legacy? Just gonna six this turn. Interesting to see Nathan on uh, on normal basics as well. I think here I'm pretty happy just to eat uh, seven. Oh, eight, eight, sorry. This doesn't look like a very fast deck, which is nice, but unfortunately here we don't have much to actually interact with the show and tell. Green Suns for two doesn't do a whole lot. Yeah, I think the, the Green Suns is potentially just waiting out for... Uh, for Night of Autumn. So it might just be a case of getting down Kaya. Then, passing. Really want to find something like Thalia in the next uh, draw phase. Uh, maybe a, a Green Suns for Night could be okay. But yeah, Impulse does make me think this is going to be a, a show and tell deck. Hey, thanks Creams Creamsicle. Hope you're well. It's always interesting, Blue-White Omni. It's probably the, the deck that I have the least amount of experience with. Yikes. <laughs> there isn't a whole lot to put in here. Nothing that's really relevant either. Hmm. 
It might just be Scrib Ranger because it nets us. I guess it doesn't net us a mana without a noble hierarch or a mana dork in play. It might just be a land that's best. Because if they put in something like Emrakul, then there's potential that I draw into Caracas, and then I can also attack with the Questing Beast in the same turn to start getting some pressure going. Just a little bit too fair there, unfortunately. Uh, Deafening Silence is great. Uh, I don't mind Force and Surgicals. Um, Chalice is also interesting, especially if I'm taking out Swords to Plushares. I'm not too sure what the white is for, but I'm sure chat can tell you. Um, I'm not sure if they have like a, a side strategy of Mentor. Uh, plagues can come out. Decay can most likely come out. Scavenging Ooze can mo most likely come out. So this is 60. Kai is interesting as well, just the uh, each opponent discards. Maybe Kai is better than something like Ramanap. Which, uh, I guess Kaya is also pretty loose. I don't mind, I don't mind Skyclave as my choice of removal over like, Abrupt Decay and Swords, because it does hit a few more things. Hey Pokey! <laughs> I hope so. Um, I do like Hex Drinker. Collector Oop is actually probably pretty bad here. Chalice is probably okay on one, seeing I'm bringing out so many uh, one drops like swords. Also just shutting off their cantrips is, is pretty good. I don't think Teague does enough, but Teague is definitely interesting because it turns off something like um, Cunning Wish into uh, Shared Summons, if they're playing Shared Summons. Maybe Teague is just worth it as a as something over like uh, Ramanap. Because it looks like they're they're a pretty basic heavy mana base. Going to be pretty tough, but if it's going to be pretty tough, this is a hand that's going to probably do pretty well. We also have a, a turn one mana excellent, which is nice to get above the chalice for one. So I'm pretty happy to keep this. Also, just have turn two Teague if that's relevant. save the wasteland for now because if I show the wasteland then my opponent might be inclined to uh, not go for basics off other fetches so I think it's just forest uh, chalice for one and then we can attack for one if this resolves this feels like a brainstorm yeah I guess the fairy is also a nice out to the chalice if they want to bounce it. But here, I kind of hope they go for no <laughs> they go for a basic. That's fair. Interesting that they fetch now. I'm gonna go for Teague first, and then Sylvan Library in case they have a containment priest. But it looks like they don't. Contempt Priest also bad against uh, Show and Tell, so maybe Contempt Priest is actually a, a loose card to play around. The nice thing about using a Green Suns as well is that it leaves a permanent in my hand to put in off a Show and Tell if that happens. So maybe it's better to just go for like a Knight there off the Green Suns. Because yeah, we got nothing here. Oh, okay. Ah, uh, but now Teague's turning off the Green Suns as well. Yikes. That's a big yikes. Okay. They did. 
didn't cast anything last turn. Why? I can't surgical anyway. So I think I put this on top and pay for the Thalia. And then just try to get in with Beast. Teague, why? Yeah, this is where Teague can be a little, little bit upsetting. Same thing with like Collector Oof if you're playing it in a Stoneforge Mystic build. Yeah. Unfortunately, Maverick just doesn't have too much against show and tell, so you just gotta try to avoid it or put up some sort of fight when you do kind of run into it. But obviously here it just didn't really work out. <laughs> This is a cool card. Definitely pretty, uh... Yeah, unfortunately two decks that we ran into today, but that is just part of the legacy metagame. Can't be too unhappy. And Caracas, yeah. That's rough. At least we get a chest, which is always nice. Aurea Champion actually interesting, something that I play in uh, Modern Death and Taxes in the sideboard, which is nice. Um, hey, Nathan, I will take a loss for a sub. A huge thank you. I uh, hope you're enjoying uh, Blue White Omni. Uh, what is the white for, other than I assume Teferi's in there, but I'm not too sure what the other cards are. Um, overall, the list felt pretty solid. It doesn't really do anything different to our poor matchups like uh, Show and also Doomsday, but um, I felt it was pretty nice. Still playing Skyclaves over Parts, which I, I did like. Um, other change was uh, the Gilded Goose did come up as an at an awkward time where I did want the extra mana and I had to kind of wait. Two Rip, two Metal Image, two four Swords, and four to Fairy. That's cool. That's sick. I do like. I have seen it before. But I wasn't too sure what the white was, but um, that does seem pretty sweet, especially the rips. Um, rip obviously being a pretty nice graveyard piece of hate. Um, I think if I ran this back, I'd probably make use of the goose a little bit better. Um, I could bring in Thoughtseize to the to the sideboard if I really wanted some sort of plan against uh, Doomsday or Sh Sneak, but I think that it's just one of those matchups that you just don't want to spend too much time thinking about. Hey Pokey, a huge thank you for the sub. I uh, hope you're doing well. Uh, I think I saw your name before on the leaderboard, uh, pretty high up. Let's uh, let's take a quick look. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> just a just a classic 32. That's fine. That's cool. I'm here with my one. I think I got two. Okay, somewhere near there. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, overall. Um, so we played against. Uh, Mono White uh, Bomberman. Uh, that was pretty good. A little bit of loose plays in the in the early one, but that was okay. Uh, the 2 0 was against uh, Blue Green uh, Cloud Post with a, a sideboard or a, a show and tell plan. Uh, the 2 0 was against Death and Taxes. Plagagenet is really good. Haha, <laughs> hey Lee. A huge thank you for the sub. Very nice. Uh, one Mr. Lee is another, YouTube, another YouTuber and Twitch streamer uh, who loves green spells in Legacy. Uh, but yeah, it does some, some really cool content. So if you do like my sort of content or any sort of legacy content, definitely check out Mr. Lee because uh, I believe he's also Seattle based, which is cool. But yeah, a really uh, entertaining guy. And hopefully someone that I will do a collab with soon. I just have to uh, send you a message and, and sort that out because that would be really cool. Uh, Jack was on Doomsday uh, and Nathan was on uh, Blue White. Blue White, Blue White Show. Um, how long did that go for? Could I do another? I think I could do another. Does anyone want to see another one? I could fit another league in. I think... Hmm... What is the time? It's 117. I gotta call it there, unfortunately. But, uh, if you guys want to find me, you can find me at uh, YouTube slash Dicks on Twitch here. You can find me at Twitter. Uh, you can also find me at the Green Sun Zenith if you want. Uh, I'll be back on Thursday night. Uh, most likely with Maverick, 
but I'll see what we play. Um, I have some Death and Taxes content going on my YouTube today. Uh, and yeah, hopefully play around a little bit more with Punishing Maverick, which I've been really enjoying. I think uh, it's in a pretty good spot. Uh, let's find the list that I was playing. I think this was it. Um, the big addition is of course Clots. Uh, and then also just having access to blast effects on the board is really nice. Um, Rax, who 5-0'd, was playing Bolt over Punishing Fire, which I really like. Um, but the mana was a, a little bit rough, but I think there's there's definitely some, some room for improvement uh, across the board. So I might get some of this in as well. But a huge thank you once again. Uh, I'm going to see who else is playing. Uh, I believe Asuka is playing some Legacy Standstill, which is nice. Let me quickly check. Actually, the Legacy Pit is playing. Nice. A huge thank you once again. A huge thank you to the new subs, uh, the new followers. Uh, it means a lot. Uh, enjoy your weekends, stay safe, uh, and I'll hopefully see you soon. Cheers.